what we want to do here is show you a little bit of what is being done for the Oculus Rift, because it's been around, for $300 you can buy a developer kit and you can start developing for this virtual reality headset. Um, came from games, is already quickly, you know, going to other areas. People are now thinking of movies and, you know, heard of a thing where you can stand in the middle of a football field and see, you know, the game and so forth. Interesting things are happening. And uh, it seems to be that the technology that was sort of in our mind for 20 years suddenly is also at this turning point. Or is it, you know, just, you know, people are really wondering. But what usually happens with new technologies, there are always some creative minds to go and try it out. So when I looked for people that could tell a little bit about the Oculus Rift, I ended up with Random. Now, Random is a company in Amsterdam that does incredibly creative work, beautiful videos, websites, and so forth. They have creative people there. And Mike Pelletje developed something special and is going to talk also a little bit about what is happening around Oculus Rift. Mike. Hello, everyone. So, I'll tell you a little bit about um, the Oculus Rift and virtual reality. And I guess the best place to start is where um, virtual reality used to be. Next. <laughs> All right, cool. Here we go. So that's what a VR helmet used to look like. It was pretty massive, very kind of ugly looking, heavy, slow, probably very low resolution, really expensive. Um, it was only the province of research institutions. This is actually a picture from a place that I used to work at in Canada called the Banff Center, or the Banff New Media Institute. And when I started there in 2002, this device was already sitting in the closet and had probably a very thick layer of dust on it. Um, nobody had touched it in a very long time. So everybody had kind of considered that um, virtual reality might have been, oh, perfect, a uh, failed experiment. But along came the Oculus, and as Monique ex uh, explained, um, it was a very successful Kickstarter campaign. And although it hasn't been released to the general public, um, over 60,000 developers have already um, sent in orders for these devices, and they've shipped that first generation of the development kit. This is what it looks like when it's on somebody. Um, and they've also developed a second version of the prototype, because obviously um, there are still a few problems that need to be solved and still, I think, remain to be solved. But um, one of them was the issue of resolution. So the current uh, developer kit, it's still quite low res. It feels kind of like you're looking through a screen door when you're looking at it. And um, it's a faster display, uh, higher frame rate, uh, lower latency, and that sort of thing. But also, um, they've incorporated the tracking camera. And so that's to compensate for the fact that the Oculus is really good at, um, you can tell sort of which way you're pointing. But if you do something like move forward towards, um, it doesn't register anything, or if you move down. So it kind of uh, reduces your sense of presence. So that uh, camera kind of helps a little bit with that. Now, um, there's other companies that have also entered into this field. So um, PlayStation has been demoing, or Sony has been demoing this uh, version of their headset called Project Morpheus at uh, GDC and other places, and it's set to be uh, released in about a year. Um, and then there's also sort of the maker community that have uh, made their own sort of versions of it. So this is a headset in which uh, you slide your mobile phone in. And so the graphics and the sensing is all being taken care of on the mobile device. And so you don't need an extra computer or anything like that. So um, what we've done at Random um, was a project called um, the Nail Polish Inferno. And what it was was really just a sort of first uh, art project to um, just get our feet wet with the, with the device. And um, I'd actually like to invite Monique out again, and maybe she can try out the device. You can see what it's like. Uh, Off with the glasses. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just OK. Well, I see input, HDMI. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning it on. That'll be a moment here. Ooh. 
All right, great. So can we uh, switch up to, oh, no, we can't because it's not plugged in. <laughs> ah, yes. All right, I think we're ready now. Perfect. There's all kinds of strange things here. <laughs> so can you tell us what you're seeing, Monique? Well, obviously, I'm in a space with lots of, with, with a pole dancer <laughs> and with somebody on a swing. Oh, I can look up, actually. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, and there's a bit of juggling there. <laughs> um, it's so very interesting. Yes, you can actually, you ha do have the feeling that you can move around. Yeah, so I'm moving for you. Okay. That's the only yes. kind of limitation yes, yes, right yes, now. Yes, 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 yes. There's a dog on the piano. So this was a project created by an artist that we work with, uh, Jeffrey Lilliman, and he just finished doing the tour visuals for uh, Miley Cyrus. Um, <laughs> There's Miley. So apparently she <laughs> likes this kind of uh, stuff. Always good to see her. Um, and the character that you're looking at right now, the dancer, her name is Sheest, and she's a fashion model. She's the face of many campaigns, but it's kind of ironic because she doesn't actually really have a face. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like, I mean, it is like being in a 3D space. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think mm, you it's one thing for me to show it up on the screen, but the best thing is actually to try it on because you really get the sense that you're there and coming face to face with these very bizarre creatures and maybe you feel like Ooh, you're going insane it's, a little it's, bit. It's close to my feet now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> It, 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 it's also the best phase of any new technology. You know? <laughs> when the artists think like, whoa, this is interesting, and then they start. I mean, okay. Where are you? Oh. I'm right here. So <laughs> you shall could, I take you the could, headset yes. from you? You should all go try this one. All right, cool. So afterwards, maybe we'll have a chance yeah. to try it out. Thanks, Monique. And can I get the slides again, please? So I'll quickly show just a couple other, um, I'll skip through these here because you've already seen it. This is just a little maybe HD version of what you saw there. It's pretty intense. <laughs> Anyways, so one of the things that you'll notice when you pop on this headset is that you look down and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, uh, where, where's my body? Where's my hands? How do I interact with that world? So. In that demo, I'm kind of doing it the wrong way. I'm driving it for her. But there's other ways where maybe you can drive it yourself. Um, I'll show you a demo from um, this is using a device called the Razer Hydra, which was released a few years ago, but people kind of have bought all of them now. Unfortunately, you can't really find them. But they're sort of like the Wii controller, but they're position trackers. So they can sense the position of your hands. And so you can use it to sort of have hands inside that uh, virtual environment and look really cool while you're doing it, of course. And so you can see here, he's picking up and manipulating an object and basically doing something that you'd never be able to do in real life, which is um, take that chair and wait for it, wait for it. Check it out the window. Awesome. Um, so maybe you want to do something more than just use your hands. Um, this is a platform called the Virtuix Omni. And this allows you to run in place. <laughs> this is also pretty awesome because it's showing it connected to a triple A um, uh, video game here. So you could uh, shoot people and get a workout. It's awesome. <laughs> OK, so maybe you don't want to be confined to that little um, pen. Um, this is a demo from uh, Xsense, and they make uh, really amazing motion capture suits. And so in this demo, it's awesome. They're walking up the stairs in a modeled environment, and uh, they're moving. And that's just by wearing that motion capture suit. So of course, the limitation here is that you have to have a large open space. And then you also have to have somebody to accurately model it, because otherwise, you're going to crash into things and hurt yourself, because you're completely blindfolded. And I guess the other limitation here is that uh, Xsense uh, kind of targets the uh, movie industry and big game studios, so these suits cost the price of a luxury car. But um, there was recently a successful Kickstarter campaign which is targeting the more end user sort of thing. So this is from a company called Prio VR. Um, and they're also selling uh, motion capture suits. And yeah, 
And so this, once again, allows you to interact with a virtual world using your entire body. Now, I think this is maybe the most dangerous demo because I wouldn't really trust a blindfolded guy with a sword. <laughs> Um, so all of those examples show um, worlds that are 100% 3D modeled. Um, but there's also people that are doing investigations on uh, using mixed reality. So in this demo, it's a demonstration called uh, AR Rift. And so it's augmented reality. They've attached stereo cameras to the front of the Oculus. And then uh, they're inside a sort of motion capture studio so they can accurately track uh, where he's standing and his hands and that sort of thing. And then that allows him to overlay like an interface element, for example. And so he can do stuff like give himself a friend to hang out with in this virtual environment, which is also his studio. And, uh, and we'll just wait for a really awesome moment here because it gets a little bit um, Inception-like. You can see, uh, yeah, as he moves around uh, that figure with real-time shadows and everything. But here we go. He's putting on the Oculus inside the Oculus. He's manipulating the Oculus, and now, whoa, virtual reality. <laughs> OK, so um, last couple of really quick demos. This is just a demo showing um, the Oculus hooked up to a webcam. So you can imagine this as a sort of telepresence thing. But it can be really useful, say, attached to a robot or something like that. And if you want to look around in a natural way and have a real-time stereo view of something, you probably don't need it on your desk beside you, but <laughs> we can think of cool things to do with it. And then the last uh, thing that I want to show you is just uh, this is an open source uh, player called VR Player. And so the idea here is that you can take also just pre-recorded video content. So it doesn't need to be rendered 3D. And uh, this is something that you can download now and also hook up to the um, Oculus. And so, yeah, this is just with pre-recorded uh, video content, and then it allows you to uh, sort of see it in stereo and in 3D and look around. So, thanks. Thank you. Thanks.